guys, it's Reagan, and today I'm back with a type of video I have not filmed in a while, and that is an individual non spoiler review of Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I have not posted a standalone review in quite a few months on my channel for a variety of different reasons that weren't really like conscious, <laughs> but I have been reading a lot of your comments and requests for more standalone review videos, so here we are. I'm definitely gonna try to do one monthly for you guys from now on. But anyway, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the non-spoiler review for Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. This is a standalone fantasy novel by Brandon Sanderson, but it exists within the Cosmere, so there are a few characters that exist in this book that we see in the Stormlight Archives, which is so awesome. But this is a novel that really took me by surprise for a few different reasons. I went in with strangely like middle expectations. I don't think I can go into a Brandon Sanderson book with low expectations, but coming off the Stormlight Archives and reading Alloy of Law and things like that, I was like, this is probably going to be pretty good. I wasn't expecting it to blow my mind and for me to fall in love with the characters as much as I did. This is an amazing fantasy story that has one of the most unique magic systems I've come across and follows two sisters. We have two main female protagonists that drive this plot forward and their stories and their perspectives were just so amazing to read from. I loved this book so much. This is a story that's set uh, between two kingdoms. They're neighboring kingdoms that kind of have the same origin, or rather they are part of the same kingdom until one rebelled and left and started their own in the mountains. Our two main characters are sisters who are princesses that grew up in this mountain. Their homeland and where they come from being humble, wearing very neutral colors, and not really showing your emotions is the right approach to living your life. Versus the neighboring kingdom, the Halidurn kingdom, Color and magic are the root of everything, and color is on every surface it could possibly be. This is also a world where the magic system is centering around something called breaths. Every human being is born with one innate breath. However, they can be freely given or sold. They can't be stolen, however. The more breaths you have, the more powerful you are. Not only do colors become more vibrant and more rich, but you're actually able to send your breaths into innate objects to kind of bring them to life and control them. Another big difference between these two kingdoms is the religions that they worship. The Hollandern Kingdom worships individuals called the Return, which are humans who have died in some sort of heroic way and are brought back to life, and then they are now bestowed as gods, and they require one breath a week to survive from the people themselves. So the beginning of the story starts with these two sisters growing up in Idris, the neighboring kingdom, and basically there has been a long but strenuous peace between Idris and Halandern, and one of the agreements is that the king is to send one of his daughters to marry the god king of Halandern, which is the most powerful returned in the city. The responsibility of marrying the god king was always supposed to be the older sister Viviana's job and task. However, at the last minute, the king of Idris decides to send his youngest daughter, Ciri, to the Haladarian capital to marry the god king. From there, <laughs> Ciri is thrust into court politics and begins to realize that this court is full of not only gods, but secrets and all sorts of underlining plots. Viviana decides to leave Idris, go to Haladarian capital to try to save her sister from the fate she feel like she was always supposed to bear herself. That is the overall plot to Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. It's a really complex world and political system. We have so many different elements at play here. Neighboring but competing kingdoms. We have two very different but unique religions at play. We have one that's centering around the returning of gods who now have more powerful abilities and are worshipped, are innately created by the humans that also worship them. And then obviously surrounding that we follow two sisters who have never really encountered anything from this kingdom prior and are thrust into very complicated in different plots. I love this story for so many different reasons. First and foremost, the sister perspectives were so lovely. At the beginning of the story, we follow each sister in their own respective storyline, and each of the women are very capable and are very like strong-willed in their own unique ways, but they also have a lot of ignorance as it comes to this other kingdom, and you have to see them not only grow into their own power and into their own self and honestly gain confidence to begin to make decisions outside of the framework and mind work of the world they always known as they've grown up. Specifically, we see Siri have to grapple with really complex court situations, and you see become a really frightened young girl into a very powerful and capable woman. Siri is a main character I absolutely loved <laughs> to read from. She's spontaneous, she's spunky, she's confident. Her story arc is not artificial in any way. Contrasting that, we have Viviana, 
who comes as a very stoic woman at the beginning of the story and she holds on to the pillars of Iderian society to her core. However, when she's confronted with alternate perspectives and viewpoints on how to live life, she struggles with being able to not be judgmental to people who are different than her. But again, you see her begin to gain more understanding and also realize that just because she's done something a certain way her whole life, that doesn't mean it's her own right way or the only right way to approach something. So I really love these sister storylines together as main characters. They're so great because they're so different, but you can see the love they have for each other as they're both just trying to do the right thing. Additionally to this, we follow another main character's perspective, a return god called Light Song. And the way that Brandon Sanderson uses this character is that he's kind of like the main detective to this undercurrent of political scheming that we have a feeling is existing throughout this entire thing. I'll say the plot of this book really took me by surprise in so many different ways. Brandon Sanderson is kind of the king of plot twists, so he's really great at leading you in one direction and jerking you in another direction almost as suddenly. That being said, Light Song's character was really unique because as they returned, they lose all of their memories from their previous life. So not only was Light Song trying to uncover what was going on within the court and within the kingdom, he was trying to uncover what happened in his own past life. He was also really hilarious and served as kind of the humor um, element to this book that I found to be a quite a nice relief. He was funny. He was how we just interacted with people. He kind of reminded me of wit from the Stormlight Archive series. Moving beyond the characters to the overall plot that exists throughout this entire book, obviously there are a lot of different plot strings that exist within this story, but the main one is this very strenuous relationship between Idris, which is a rebelling kingdom, to Hollandern, and the decision if Hollandern and the court and their armies are going to seize Idris again and basically um, create a war between these two rival kingdoms. Both sisters in their own ways are trying to stop this war from happening and there are a lot of different players from a lot of different places and honestly just trying to decipher everyone else's opinions and their own reasons why they want this war to and to not happen is just fascinating. Definitely a plot that will keep you engaged from beginning to end and Brandon Sanderson creates a mystery within this court of politics that really will just keep you on the edge of your seat and will surprise you at every turn. You just fall in love with your three main characters' perspectives and you root for them and you want them to be making the right decisions, but you honestly don't know what they should do at all at any point. It's not like, why would you do that, Siri? Why would you do that, Viviana? You don't know what to do. It's confusing and complicated. Additionally, as I've already really talked about in depth about the three main characters that I really enjoyed, there's also this whole cast huge cast of side characters. And what Brady Sanderson does so masterfully with this huge cast of side characters is, as you'll notice, all of the opinions you begin to form about all these characters are only informed by other people's opinions of them. Therefore, Brandon Sanderson does this thing where you begin to hate and dislike characters for really no other reason than what other people or other characters in this book's opinions about them are. And some of that is founded and sometimes it's not founded in anything at all, which creates a lot of scenarios where you might have been misunderstanding a character from the beginning because you were believing another side character that you first encountered. With that same note and with that same vein, Brandon Sanderson plays on a lot of tropes and a lot of characters that you might come across often in fantasy or in books in general, and he'll lead you down a path to be like, yes, I think I know where this is going. And then I'll be like, no, 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 friend. But let me turn that on its head for you entirely. All that being said, this book is one that I loved so much more than I was expecting. It might honestly be one of my top Brandon Sanderson books I've ever read. I loved the characters. I loved the story. I loved the magic system. I thought the whole book was just enchanting and so magical. I enjoyed every page of this novel and it has a bit of a love story in it as well, which I'm also always a fan of. That being said, I gave this book a five out of five stars and I would highly recommend reading it. It's a standalone, so it's not a huge fantasy commitment like the Stormlight Archives are, and I think it's just as an amazing read from beginning to end. So definitely loved this book. Can't wait to read more Brandon Sanderson this year. And yeah, alrighty guys, that is my non-spoiler review of Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Let me know down below some books you think I should review next, as I will try to keep that in consideration. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye!